Welcome back to Adobe Photoshop. And today we're gonna to take a look at something that was kind of a nemesis in the past for me. It's something that I didn't use a lot because it caused a lot of issues. Adobe has gotten much better at the algorithms for auto levels and auto curves. So today I'm gonna to show you how to use auto levels and auto curves, which are actually the exact same thing. It's just one is in curves, one is in levels. And I'm gonna show you how to pick one of the four algorithms that are available and then to even do finer adjustments inside of those different algorithms. All right, so we have this image here and it's a little bit dark, but this was toned by this person to be a little bit dark, I think. So I don't actually have a problem with the way this is image is toned. It's just gonna work really good for this tutorial. So what we're gonna do here is first, I'm gonna show you how to use the different auto levels and auto tones. So right up here, we have an adjustment level and an adjustment curve. Now you could also come up here and go to image. You could use auto tone and auto contrast, which are basically doing the same thing. And I'll further explain what each one of those is doing in the second. So I could hit auto contrast. Now the problem with auto contrast is it's a non-destructive adjustment. So once I apply this and then save it, I can't go back and do that. So we're not gonna do that. So we're gonna just either do levels by clicking there and then coming down here into the properties and hitting auto, it's making that adjustment. Or the exact same thing, it doesn't make a difference. It works exactly the same whether you use levels or curves. Now between levels and curves, I'm gonna go ahead and click on curves. And I just prefer curves because it, it just gives you more adjustment and more adjustability within this adjustment than levels does. So we're gonna go ahead and hit auto and it's making the exact same adjustment as levels did. We're just gonna go ahead and leave the curves adjustment here. So you can see this brightened it up considerably. So if I read her facial value and I'm looking over here in the K value, this is just a grayscale value. It's went from 40 to 35%. The brightness of this woman's skin tone is probably at a normal brightness of around 20% gray. Even 35% still a little bit dark, but in this image, I think it works. But you can see, so this algorithm has brightened that area up about 5%. This is using the new enhanced algorithm that Photoshop has developed in which it looks at everything in the image and then it makes adjustments based on the values in the image. So one of the problems that auto used to have in the past was it would clip or blow out certain areas. So if you had an image like this, which doesn't have any white in it, it would make an adjustment that looks something like this. It would just totally blow it out because it would have to set white and it would have to set a black value. And if you have an image where there's no white or black anyways, it would really mess it up and make it look horrible. So one of the new functions within auto levels and auto curves is it's doing its best to not clip, meaning take a white and make it totally white with no detail. So if you look over here at this K value, if you get anything from about one to 0%, you're gonna lose all white detail. Well, in a image like this, you don't wanna lose or blow out or clip that detail out of the image. You still wanna hold that. It shouldn't be zero or 1%, that would just be too bright. Now, if you have an area in the image that's blown out and there's no detail, it's all right to have zero or 1% in the image if it's an area that doesn't have detail, but this has texture, it has detail, we don't want to lose that. So you can see right now, as I hover over her shirt, it was at 12%, but it's going to 6%, which is really good. Photoshop is not blowing this area out or making it too bright, which was the biggest issue in the past. The question is then, well, how can I adjust auto levels or check out the different algorithms and what do they mean? So it's really easy to do. We're gonna come up here into properties and we're gonna go to this little menu right here. And I'm gonna click on that and we're gonna drop down to auto options. And that's gonna bring up this little window. Now in this, I have changed, I've changed the default from this to this. 
because that's what I prefer. But by default, most of you are going to be under enhanced brightness and contrast. And enhanced brightness and contrast is the newest one. It analyzes everything in the image and then it tries to make adjustments based on the image. And this really helps in trying to not blow out certain areas. So I could click on this and hit save as default. And then now it would change that as my default one. So if I came in here and I clicked on curves and I clicked on auto, it would now be using this new enhanced. So if I come down here to auto options, you can see enhanced is what it's using there. Let's go back to this image. We're on the curves. And let's go back to auto options. So now we're under enhanced brightness. I was using the first one, which is enhance monochromatic contrast. And not only is it doing that, I've actually changed these values in here a little bit. If you were to come in here, you've noticed that I have this at 4% and zero. So let's gonna put this back at zero. And we're gonna change this white back to 100 just so you can see what it's doing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and save that. We're gonna hit yes. And then I can go back into auto levels. All right, so everything's back at its default values now, except for it would normally be under enhanced. But we're gonna take a look at enhanced monochromatic contrast. So what does enhanced monochromatic contrast mean? Well, let's read the definition. It clips all channels identically. This preserves the overall color relationship while making the highlights appear lighter and the shadows appear darker. The auto contrast command uses this algorithm. So what is the auto contrast? If you were to go up here and you go to image right there, auto contrast. So, so if you use auto contrast, it's using the same algorithm as enhanced monochromatic contrast. So what that's doing is it's not affecting the color in your image. If you're getting accurate color when you're taking your images, but you just want to adjust your brightness values, this is going to be your best option. One of the problems I have with some of the other options is they do, and I'll go ahead down here and I'll click on this one. Notice it's changed the color balance as well. So enhance per channel contrast, adjust contrast, brightness, and darkness, but it's also changing color balance. I don't usually want the computer to be changing my color balance because I have it set. The computer is basically assuming that everything is shot under a neutral lighting. So if you shot at sunset and you have that warm golden color, as this image did, notice that when we did enhance per channel contrast, and especially if I do snap to neutral midtones, it's removing all that warm color to it. I don't want it to do that. I want it to stay warm as I shot it. This is gonna be something specific to each person individually. Just because I set something one way doesn't mean that it's the right way. It's just the right way for me. Enhanced per channel contrast is our second algorithm. So let's go ahead and hear what they got to say about this one. Enhanced per channel contrast maximizes the tonal range in each channel to produce a more dramatic correction. Because each channel is adjusted individually, enhanced per channel contrast may remove or introduce color casts. The autotone command uses this algorithm. So let's go ahead and click off this. If we go up here, this is autotone. So it's saying autotone is using the same as enhanced per channel contrast. And basically what this is doing is this, it, because it's using the red, the green, and the blue channel, it's adjusting the brightness and darkness values based on these targets. And it's also adjusting color. If this is something that you like or is helpful for you, then this is a great selection or algorithm for you to use. The fact is, no matter what you set, it's not gonna work 100% of the time. Anybody that thinks one click, everything in Photoshop is a great way to work, it's, it's not. So each image inside Photoshop is gonna to be toned just a little bit differently than the other. So where enhanced per channel contrast might work for the majority of images for you, you might find that, you know, that other 5% enhanced brightness works better or enhanced monochromatic contrast. 
The reason for this video is to show you where the stuff is and give you the ability to go in and refine the algorithm so you can get a better match for that specific image. You can't just rely on the same settings to work perfectly all the time. Let's go down here to find dark and light colors. And this was kind of interesting. You got to listen to the wording. It finds the average, and that's important, the average of the lightest and darkest pixels in an image and uses them to maximize contrast while minimizing clipping. So that clipping was the issue that I had in the past. Auto color command uses this algorithm. So if we go up here to image and notice that we have uh, auto color and we can't get it unless we're on the background. So we'd have to go here. So auto color is using the same command as find dark and light colors. What this is saying is taking the average of the darkest pixels and the average of the lightest. It's not taking the lightest pixel, it's taking the average of the light pixels and the average of the dark pixels. And then it's making its adjustment based on those averages. And the last one we have is just the enhanced brightness where it's looking at the whole image and it's trying to use artificial intelligence to make an intelligent adjustment to the image in color, contrast, everything that it looks at inside of an image. The last thing that we have, and I've, I've clicked on it a couple times, is snap to neutral midtone. So what this is doing by this, it's trying to pick something that has a neutral color, like a white or a gray, and remove any color cast that might be in that area. So in this, it's looking at this white, and if it has a color to it, it's trying to neutralize that, make it a perfect gray. So down here, we have something called target colors and clipping, and that only works for the top three adjustments that we have here. So right down here, we have the clipping for the shadows, and this is the clipping for the highlights. And think of it as sensitivity. So this is the least sensitive, and you can go up to about 1%, so I can put 1% in here, and that's gonna make it more sensitive. So as the number goes up higher, you're gonna get brighter areas in the way it analyzes the program. So in this case, I'm gonna leave it at a default, which is at 0.1% and we are good to go. And then right over here, we have target colors. So when it's looking for dark and light and what it's going to set it to, it's looking at these values. So if I click on this, we can see that it's setting it right now at 100% black, which, which is 0%. So that's 100% black. And down here, it's setting it at 100% white, which is something that I actually don't want. I don't want it to set something at 100%. And that's kind of the reason that it's talking about that clipping, because it's trying to not set it at 100% anymore. When you're initially toning an image, you're better off to start a little flat. And the reason is, if you're too contrasty, it's going to fall apart if you have to open it up a lot. So I tend to start toning a little bit flat and then I'll increase the contrast in the end. So since auto tone or auto contrast is one of the very first things that you might click on, I actually want my image to be a little bit flatter. What I can do here is I can change these values and what we're looking for is this brightness value or this B. So I'm gonna go in here and change this and in this case, I'm gonna set this to 97% which is about 3% white, it's holding 3% white. You can see it went from pure white to this little bit of a gray white, I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna hit the black and I'm gonna do the same thing. In this case, I'm gonna hit four because I want it to be basically 96% black that I wanna hold at. I don't want it to set any brighter than 96%. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now it's gonna change these values. Now, when I'm working, I actually prefer this enhanced monochromatic contrast because I don't really want it to adjust my color. So now we're gonna change the clipping values at 1% and I've changed my shadow and my highlights. I'm gonna click save as default and I'm gonna come in here and hit okay. And now it's gonna save all those values as my default. So now when I come to an image like this and I click on this and I hit auto levels and curves, it's gonna be using those values. Notice we didn't get a color change and we didn't get much adjustment in the white values. So we're at five and it's holding that 3%, which is what I wanted. So if we come in here and we go to auto options, 
you'll notice that it's saved and it's using those values that I set here in enhanced monochromatic contrast. And it's saving that 4% and that 3% change here in the highlights, which is what I wanted. Now, if you decide that you want to use this one for just this one, you can click on it and hit OK, and you're done. Or if you decide that you don't like the enhanced monochromatic contrast and you want to go back to enhanced brightness, you would just click on this. You could click this, which is save as default, and you would hit OK. I'm not going to do it because I actually want it the other way, and I'm going to hit cancel. So now we can come into an image like that we have here and I'll just do auto levels and hit auto. It's going to adjust that image and you can see here's what I hate about auto levels and contrast. It blew this area out. So let's take a look at this auto options and that looked horrible. So now I can come in here and say, man, that didn't look good. But when I click on enhance brightness and contrast, this worked really good for this image. I will tell you that for most people learning Photoshop, this new enhanced brightness contrast works better. For me, I might choose this enhanced monochromatic contrast because it's working better for me on certain images. Now on an image that's dark like this that doesn't have a white value, I would never hit auto balance because I would know it's going to mess it up. But for most of you, you're going to be best by clicking Enhance Brightness and Contrast, making sure that's your default, and saving that to make sure that every time you use Auto Tone inside of Levels or Curves, you're using that new Enhanced process. Well, hopefully you learned a little bit today. Don't forget, we have created a new Facebook group, and the reason I started it is I get a lot of comments where I really need to see an image or a video of what you are talking about. It's difficult sometimes for me to give you an answer because I'm unsure of what you're trying to say or what the actual issue is. So if you go down to the description, you will see the link to the Facebook group. If you want to join that, that would be wonderful. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>